Outrage at the death of George Floyd, an African-American man while in police custody in Minneapolis. In city after American city tonight, thousands of people have once again taken to the streets to express their anger, frustration, and solidarity. It is a precarious moment for this country still in the grip of a pandemic that has claimed more than 100,000 lives, shuttered businesses, and left 40 million Americans out of work. I think it just lit a fire in all of us to say enough is enough, but we can't run from it now. No one can run from it. What about one of my African American friends? What about one of my black friends? You know, I don't want to have to wait until that is. I'm going to take action now. This galvanizing spirit, this energy uh, that I'm seeing is really motivating me. It's something that I've lived with. It's something that I have experienced uh, even as recently as last weekend, you know, walking through my own neighborhood and being stared at by certain people uh, because I guess I didn't look like I belong. I believe really firmly that none of us are free until all of us are free. And so for issues that maybe in theory don't directly affect me, I know that they affect people who I care about. And I know that if I stand by and don't say something, um, then I can't live with myself like that. I just need to be active and I need to be vocal about what I see as being wrong in the world and wrong around us, especially things that can and should be fixed. When you learn the truth, it doesn't make sense why you wouldn't protest. You know, that was the impetus of me being on the street um, the, the first time I started to actually get the correct education of my people, of this country, and of the way that it was built. I've gone through so many emotions within the last few weeks that this has been playing out. In rage, I would say, just the frustration. I've been scared, just being wanting to be part of this, this movement right now, and going outside and just like really thinking, like, I can really be next. Um, and I think that re reality has scared me, to be honest. But I think it also has just seeing so many people come out, uh, a diverse group of people internationally as well. I think that has also given me optimism that maybe this things will change and we are gonna hold people accountable. Looking at you know people of all ages, people of all races, uh, people across the globe, really, coming together and saying, hey, yeah, we've got an issue, we've got a problem, and maybe we should take a second look, uh, or maybe we should take the first look, <laughs> and actually start to deconstruct some of these institutionalized systems that are oppressing uh, black and brown folks um, is, is very powerful. This is really the first time I've been active, like, that I've decided I'm going to do something. This is, this is new for me. This is the first time I've actually shared with people publicly that I'm, you know, I'm here for Black lives, you know. And if it's, whether it's physically or calling um, a state representative or some sort of however that protest is or all of it, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. It's hard to describe, but I, I just knew. I knew that I was called to, to be out. I need to use my voice. This is a moment, like, I couldn't be silent. I work in Cambridge, I live in Cambridge, I work with young people in Cambridge, and so I thought it was really important to make sure that I was at the Cambridge protest in particular so that the, the kids that I work with see that I'm there and that that's important to me. And As a professor, I have spent copious amounts of time undoing racism uh, in higher education. I've also been working with other institutions to develop uh, pipeline programs. It's actually a multi-million dollar effort to bring more black and brown students into my university at least uh, and also uh, kind of create a very strong networking system for those students so that they're not left behind. I started a podcast earlier this year and then when um, George Floyd's murder happened recently and all the protests and the riots at the beginning of June, we felt compelled to dedicate the show to that and it created the conversation for us and it became impossible to ignore. I know tons of people who aren't gonna be marchers. They just wanna sign a check. Good for you. Like, I know people who aren't signing a check, but they'll like post something on their page. Honestly, all energy that people can create themselves and find a way to put out into the world is beneficial. Even just the constant reaffirmation of people who haven't been affected by this 
trying their best to take a stance on this online is is emotionally supportive. Many people have put their thoughts and feelings down in writing and blog posts and books, like in videos. Find those and educate yourself. Understand the impact of racism on people's lives. There's countless protests going on, and I didn't know that people were in the chorus or doing it, but when I saw the people doing it here and there, people reached out, I reached out, um, like, let's go together, you know, just to have, to have your brothers there with you. Through the years of my working with the chorus, we've protested against injustice constantly. To this day, our concerts are acts of protest. People are still dying, and that is why I'm protesting. And to have my brothers in song there with me, that means the world. And that we are there to support Black lives, and that is the main focus of why I'm protesting, you know? James, Lissoui, and I, we just, we touch base together, and we hug and we just embrace each other and we just in the moment together. And the chorus family also just gave us that space to do that. Some of these stories that I hear from chorus members going out and protesting on their own are earth shattering to me. It's really fantastic that we have a culture where we do have the right to protest and to tell our stories. We have to fight harder every day and stand with Black Lives Matter because until we are all free, none of us are free. We have a, a purpose to celebrate difference and we have an opportunity to rededicate ourselves, to redouble, re-triple our efforts of not just saying that we're welcoming, but truly be welcoming. At a time that the organization is not able to gather, that we're not able to do what we do and bridge gaps of misunderstanding through the power of music. This is particularly challenging, but our culture of welcoming and acceptance is, for me, part of the path towards the future. Now we have this opportunity because of all of this galvanizing energy to come together and speak our minds, speak our opinions and hope that we're going to see some change. We can't go back to normal because normal wasn't working before. You can do a hundred different things or any one of them, but not stopping yourself before you take those steps. Every little bit counts. Honestly, the second that you feel like, oh, I should repost that, or oh, I should say something, or oh, maybe I'll just go for a walk and check out something in a, in a cultural area that I hadn't before, support a local business. That mere second, don't second guess it. Everyone has you know, their own little superpower uh, around these issues of race. And it's important for us to recognize what those superpowers are. And one big part of BGMC that I really appreciated is the idea is that when we show up, we all show up. Being part of BGMC and being part of this larger protest movement are thoroughly aligned. Queer rights are black rights, our brown rights are human rights, and one intersection, one slice of the community achieves some of what they need, but that's not the end. It's only until we're all free are we really free. From this point forward, I can make a choice. From this point forward, I can be right. From this point forward, I can contribute and do something that's actually meaningful instead of watching it all happen. That gut feeling that you have right now, you feel compelled to, to do something, that feeling is change. You are already on the path of getting involved, using your voice, um, and don't be afraid. We are all in this together and we're all allies and it takes one change of heart, one change of mind, and we're able to do that 1% of time. And so get involved.